Hey everyone, Tanner here, and I'm back once again. Today we'll discuss the fate of the terrarium in an aquarium, I'm going to show you some cool stuff I got, and we'll use a few of those things to give my setup a facelift. First things first, let's take a look at the ever-evolving 180 gallon vivarium. Yes, you guessed it, I've got some new plants and other interesting goodies to elevate this setup even further. The first plant I've got is Margravia species Ecuador number 9. This is a nice looking plant now, but wait till you see it after it grows in. This gem is extremely beautiful and will fit into the setup perfectly. I also got a Margravia rectiflora. This one is just your standard green Margravia, but it was cheap and will add some nice texture to the setup. I was looking to add Margravia to my collection for a while now, so I was really stoked to get these. There's only two to start, but I know this is just the beginning. Next up is another Dracula Lotox Orchid. Of the orchids I got last time, I probably like this one the best because it looks quite different from the other plants. Just like I showed in a recent video, these and the Margravia were all pinned to the background using some stainless steel wires. I'll link a video in the top right and down in the video description if you're curious to learn more about this process. Now onto something that I've had my eye on for quite a while, but it's hard to come by, and that is Dusk Moss. Don't let the name fool you, this contains much more than just moss. This blend contains a myriad of dried milled mosses, fern spores, begonia, and gesneriad seeds, among other tropical plants. This is basically the same concept as a moss milkshake, but it's composed of plants which work well in a terrarium-like environment, so there's no guesswork involved. To get this moss mix going, I poured some into a dish, along with dechlorinated water, and stirred everything together. That's not all though, this also needs to sit overnight so that everything in the mix can absorb water and get rehydrated. After waiting that amount of time, the moss could then be applied to the background. There are various ways this could be done, but being an artist, you should know that I chose the method that utilizes a brush. Paintbrush in hand, I smeared strokes of moss mix all over the background and other areas of the setup that I felt would benefit by being covered in moss. Now this isn't going to turn into a lush patch of moss overnight, it's going to take a few months to make a noticeable impact. However, I'm going to have to do my part and keep it very wet during this time period. That's going to take diligence on my part, but I do what I must in order to have happy patches of moss. I'll circle back in a few weeks and we'll see if the moss returns to life. By the way, I'll leave a link down in the video description on where I got the moss and the plants from earlier. Next up I've got some more botanicals. This time I wanted to get more long lasting items that will really elevate the look of my enclosures. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm quickly getting to the point that I want to add botanicals to pretty much all of my setups. No doubt they help create a naturalistic design both in form and function, which is something that I'm all about. I should mention that it's best practice not to put these directly in your setups. On any given occasion, I round up all of the items I'm going to use, and I put them into a pot that I have specifically for stuff like this. Then I simmer everything on low for 2-3 to three hours. Doing so will sanitize all of the botanicals, and allow them to become waterlogged in a shorter period of time. Afterward, I put all of the items into a bucket of clean water and let them soak overnight. This will also help everything get waterlogged and ready for use. Give or take, they usually take about a day to become fully waterlogged depending on what you're using. After allowing the items to soak overnight, I dump out all of this water and then fill it up with clean water again. Now they can finally be added to my setups. 
These will be going into Casper's tank, the Firebelly Toad Paladarium, and of course the 180 gallon Vivarium, which is where we'll start. I primarily have oak leaves in this setup, but I'd really like to add more elements among the leaves to better replicate the forest floor. In nature, the ground is covered by all sorts of things that fall from the trees above, so if we're trying to mimic nature, it only makes sense to add more of these items. Now on to the paludarium. In last week's video, I showed you how I maintain this setup. I wanted to add more botanicals in that video, but my shipment didn't arrive until this week. Anyways, let's add some items into the water feature and get this setup looking even better. Just like the forest floor which we were trying to mimic in the vivarium, bodies of water are also riddled with botanicals just like this. So if we're trying to replicate nature, then we might as well incorporate these elements. Last but not least, we'll add a handful of these into Casper's setup. I didn't need to add much because this tank is so small and all of the botanicals are still in pretty good shape. I also just did a water change so the Roy Boss tea needed to replenish to give that black water effect. Oh yeah, I also added a black background. At first I didn't mind seeing the wall behind the tank, but I think this looks much better. Now let's take a last look at the terrarium in an aquarium. I know most of you probably saw this coming, and it wasn't an easy decision to make. After going through all of the comments on the previous video for this aquarium, the vast majority of you wanted to see me extend the aquarium into the jar. Originally that's what I wanted to do, but I decided against it. I didn't want to risk cleaning the jar while it was in the aquarium. Judging by the green slime on the side of the jar, I'd imagine that the conditions in there are pretty gross. In order to feel right about the jar remaining in the aquarium, I'd have to clean it with something pretty harsh. Rather than potentially contaminate the aquarium with the contents of the jar or a cleaner, I figured it would be best just to remove the jar altogether and turn this into a dedicated aquarium. I did so by cutting the silicone with a razor blade and setting the jar free. During the past few months, as I contemplated the fate of the terrarium, the aquarium unfortunately suffered. I kept up with the water changes of course, but that was about it. Unlike my other setups, I don't have the lights on this one hooked up to a timer. As such, the photo period isn't consistent. Both of these factors help contribute to the algae growth that you see within this aquarium. With the terrarium removed, I can start fresh again and do some proper maintenance. It shouldn't take long to get this aquarium balanced again, but I'm not sure if that's something I want to film. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing. If not, then I'll just do it on my own terms. Before we conclude on this segment, I just want to say that not every project is going to be a success. Although I try my best to provide usable content, occasionally I like to experiment. I wish this project would have worked out, but at the end of the day, it was an experiment and I'd rather just start over with a completely different build. Don't plan on that anytime soon though. I'll revisit this once I've had time to step away for a little bit and refine the idea. I'm knees deep in several projects that I will hopefully begin to release by next week, so I apologize that I haven't got a proper project video out in a little while. On that, I will say that I have a few paludariums in the works, several terrariums, and a few aquascapes to name a few. I guarantee that the majority of the items that I just mentioned are so unique that you probably haven't seen them elsewhere. If those are all things that you'd be interested in seeing, and you want to see updates and progress of all of the stuff that you saw in this video, then be sure to subscribe and join the Serpa Squad if you're not already.
As usual, I just want to take a moment and thank you for tuning in. It means a lot that you would spend your time watching my videos. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you took a moment and gave this video a thumbs up, as well as maybe leaving a comment. Both are some of the best ways that you can help support what I'm doing on this channel, and if you do, I thank you in advance. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one, Serpa Squad. Take care and peace.